All right, everybody. How are we doing today? YouTube world, social media, social media world. How are we doing today, guys? Hey, look, <clears throat> I appreciate y'all watching this today. Um, you're watching Texas Cajun Outdoors, y'all. We do uh, custom handmade jigs. I'm going to hold this up here for a minute so y'all can get everything you need off of that car. Look at that. We uh, custom handmade jigs. We do guided crappie trips on Lake Palestine, Lake Laywater, Lake Gilmer. Uh, got a, over 20 years of experience uh, fishing these local lake guys. So uh, we actually use our handmade jigs, you know, on a you know on a daily basis fishing guys we got a lot of different profiles that we use so we all we all we also always looking for something new you know new colors new profiles basically different sizes and shapes so first <clears throat> today we're going to do uh, a profile that that i do very well with guys we'll, we'll do it from start to finish i'll show y'all how to make this jig but this is one of my go-to profiles guys let me uh get this deal so we y'all can get a good view of it but i really do well on on this profile guys look here that is a pillow type that this right here is actually a quarter ounce head it's a pill, pillow type head it's got the red body, and it's got the red uh, feathers there, guys. It's got some blue flash in it. You can see that flash there. But anyway, I, me personally, I do well in all kind of waters, basically. You know, especially I did. You know, this this, this summer has been real hot. Um, I did really, really good on this this color here, this pro, this profile here this summer in the heat, man. It's been hard to find fish, but. Anyway, let's do, uh, let's get started. We're going to do a start to finish on this bad boy. Uh, <clears throat> look, guys, I, <clears throat> it took me a, 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 a while to get this down, and I still don't know everything. Uh, I learn something new every single day. Not only jig making, that's just, you know, everything that I do, guys. So, um, everybody's got their own ways, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. Hey, look, if you would, please uh, like and subscribe, you know, to my channel. We putting out jigs, guys. I'll, I'll show y'all everything that I know about it from start to finish. Look, that's a different profile there. That's a round head, quarter ounce round head. That's a, a bigger profile, you know, maybe entice a bite. You know, sometimes, you know, that's what it takes. You know, switching up your jig, switching up your profile to something that they'll buy. But anyway, guys, I don't mind showing, you know, sharing anything, you know. If it can help somebody else out down the road, man, that's what I'm here for. But um, today we're going to get started, guys, and we are going to tie this, tie this jig here. And no, I don't have no fancy name for it yet i haven't really got a name but i've been fishing with that blue and red for quite a while guys and i can see it really does good so let's get started guys we uh we're gonna put we gotta do a 16th ounce today i've already got a head paint a pillow type I've, i do have a little uh sparkle in this paint right here um let me see it's called disco blue this is a Protec. All my paints are Protec, but anyway, it's Disco Blue. There's a Protec. Oh, let's see. It is actually Disco Blue is this color here. I really like that color, and it really pops. Anyway, this is a 1 ounce head we are going to start with today. We, I, you can tie it in any, any thread that you want, basically. Whatever floats your boat. I mean, guys, that's that's a deal with making these jigs. You can tie this with any color you want. You don't have to say, you know, when I started making jigs, the guy that taught me, you know, he said, man, you need to stick with this and stick with this profile. You can never tell, you know, what a crop, what is going to entice a crappie, guys. I can tell you that right now. 
I fish a lot. I put in a lot of hours fishing. And sometimes a weirdest color profile will catch a crappie. I can hmm, I can fish with a a known go-to color, you know, on a daily basis and catch a bunch of fish. But I'm liable to show up one day and not get a bite, guys. You know, like on a black and chartreuse, you know, or just any color, you know. Chartreuse is a known color that a lot of people go to, but I have actually pulled up to some of my fishing holes and literally not been able to get a bite. And I just picked something up, you know, out of my tackle box, out of my jig box that I just threw together, you know. It'd be the weirdest profile, weirdest set of colors that you wouldn't even think. You know, why would a fish even bite that? But hey, that song of God has, has made my day, you know. It, otherwise, I wouldn't have caught nothing. And here I come back with a, with a cooter full of fish, you know. So just because, some, you know, some people say, hey, look, we need to stick to this. We need to stick to that. I don't believe in all that, guys. You know, I believe in what is going to catch fish, you know. And, and changing things up sometimes, that will, you know, that, that's not going to make or break your day. You know, so my jig box is got thousands of dip. My personal jig box, guys, I, I don't even want to start counting the different colors, you know, that I got. So don't let somebody say, hey, you know, stick to this profile or let, tie this, you know, tie this, these feathers and this body with this color. I just don't believe in that, guys. And that's just straight up honest truth. Boy, that daggum uh, thread in that bobbin was actually uh, kicking my butt. But anyway, let's get started here. As always, we're going to start at the base of the head. And I got my little tagline, as you can see. Let me roll up a little, get a little slack out of there. I had two months, two months. I start with about three inches, as always, and I just chase my tagline. Start at the base of the hook, base of the head. And I chase my tagline. You can see I'm holding that tagline up. I chase it all the way to the tip of my hook. All right, perfect. Now I've got a nice even layer of thread from the base of my hook. I'm, I'm sorry, from the base of my head to the tip of my hook. A nice even layer of thread. Now I can cut that tagline off. All right, now I'm going to, <clears throat> look, I always try to keep about an inch and a half, maybe two inches. I try, that's a rule of thumb. I try to keep that much from the tip of my bobbit to my shank of my hook, all right? Inch and a half, two inches, all right? So I'm gonna make a run back up to the base of my head, guys. Now look, I am going to use some red flash today. Norm, sometimes I keep this down here. Sometimes I don't, guys. Look, everybody's not, I'm not perfect all the time. Matter of fact, I'm not perfect anytime. But anyway, let's get some red flash out of here. So, bam, here we go. We're going to do our... Uh, Tie a red flash in. So look, <clears throat> I'm just hanging, just got it bobbing here at the base of my head. I'm going to just make a loop, make a horseshoe, just like that. Make a horseshoe and slip it over my head. And I'm going to leave about two inches on both sides. See what I'm saying? I'm about two inches from the center of my shank to the end of the flash. I'm going to make one wrap to tie the flash in. Then I'm going to wrap that flash, tie it in all the way to the point of my hook. That way my flash is tied in good. It can't go nowhere. Bam. So what I did right there, that flash is tied in. It is covered with a wrap, you know, of the thread. All right. I do not like to cut them the same length. Let's see what, show you what I'm talking about. I do not want, there's two pieces here. 
One, two. I don't want them to be the same length because they got a tendency to stick together once you're fishing, once it's in the water. So I cut one a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be much, just a little bit longer, guys. All right, there we go. There's our flash. I right, see how it's a little bit longer. Yeah, you can see that. All right, today we're going to use neck hackle. All right, <clears throat> it's fluorescent red neck hackle. I'm going to show you how. I select my feathers and uh, how we cut them also, guys. The selection and cutting them. And like I say, guys, everybody has, you know, different opinions, different ways of doing. This is the way that I do and it's worked for me for quite a while. I don't have any issues. I've never had a jig come apart. And, hey, I'm happy, happy, happy. Anyway, so look, we're going to take a feather. Obviously, something like that, guys, we don't want to mess with that. That's just a trash feather. We're going to throw that away. We want a good quality, full feather, all right? We're going to start at the tip, hold it at the very tip. We're going to pull it down and fluff. I might as well say fluff that feather. Fluff it out. See how it fluffed it out, made it all big and puffy? Man, that's a good-looking feather. All right. So this very tip right here, the very tip of it, I'm not going to use that on this jig. I may use that on like a, a 30 second or a 64 ounce head, you know, but as far as this jig right here, I cannot use that. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to put it in my little pile over here for when I do make a smaller jig. So we're going to start with that V. You see how we have this V in here? I want my feather to be sticking off the length of that shank. I want it to be sticking off the end of my hook about the length of that shank. So about right there, guys. You're on this particular one, about an inch. So I'm going to make me some cuts. And look, when you cut it, don't just come in here. Don't just take your scissors and go in and cut it. You want to go to that center center piece the core of that feather kind of wiggle your fat you know wiggle your scissors around till you get to the core of that feather and make your cut that way you got a nice pretty v you know and you're not messing that up so and there you know be honest guys there's really no rule of how many feathers you can put there you know on, on this jig I like my to have a you know a good bushy tail, you know that is that's what I'm going for. You know I want it to be stand, you know I want my tail to be standing out nice and and fluffy and you know just um, looking all you know conformed. See what I'm saying? So now we're gonna take our feathers, guys, and we're gonna put them together. We are going to put the bottom the top together but basically we want our bottom v's all to be lined up i'm going to show you as soon as i get it as soon as i get it situated in my hands and sometimes it is a son of a gun with big hands to to make this happen guys so bear with me just a minute bear with me just a minute everybody All right, got that one. Now we're going with this one. Okie dokie. So look, I got all the V's lined up. Everything's lined up nice and even. So I, me particularly, I like to have something good to tie to. I want to tie to the core of that feather. The core meaning the center piece of that feather well I'll, actually i use four pieces of the feather on for this jig here so i'm going to strip the feathers back off of that that core the center of it i just took my fingers and i stripped it back now you see how i got a good place to tie to now i mean and i i'm going to tie all the way down my shank but I want to make sure I actually dropped a piece. Sorry about that. So now I got to start over. Sorry about that, guys. I need to actually turn my fan off. Probably be ideal. I don't hardly ever run it, but today I got it on. 
Man, it blows these feathers around like crazy, guys. Guys and gals, I know, hopefully I got some women fishermen watching, you know. Hate to just keep saying guys, but I'm saying that, you know, in general. Hopefully I got women and children and, you know, some younger, some older people. Hopefully I'm catching the attention, you know, of a lot of people. So that is my goal. So anyway, all right. Let's start tying this in, everybody. So, my fingers are sticky today. I don't know what is going on, man. I've dropped feathers, did all kind of stuff. So look, we are going to start. I got, I'm holding my feathers right here in the crook of my hook. All right, I'm going to put, and I've got my feathers all the way up to the base of my head. I'm going to put some light wraps. I'm not going to put any, no pressure on them, just some light wraps around. If I put pressure, my feathers are going to move, and I want my feathers just perfect. Uh, you don't want them all moved around, all cock out on there. I want them just perfect. Once you get, I put me some light wraps on there, about four or five light wraps, once I got my feathers where I want them, I start tightening down on a guy. All right, and I'm gonna run a pass, nice even pass, pulling, you know, some tension all the way back to the tip of my hook. All right, once I got it done, I'm gonna tie it in as always. Just wrap around, twist your fingers four times. All I'm basically doing is tying a knot. All right, bam, got it tied. And look, you see how much string I got out here? I don't know if you can see, but I got over a foot and a half. So always give yourself plenty of room. You can always roll your thread back up, all right? I want plenty of room when I do that. Okay, I'm gonna roll back to where the, the tip of my hook, to where I wanna start from. Uh, now we are going to Tie on our body, y'all. Uh, we are using a single color tinsel. Got some flash in it. It is red. Okay. You can do a single, double. You can make your body whatever color you want. But this one here, I'm just going to do basically straight red. And you see how I got, I made it kind of, you see how I, I stripped this back a little bit. That way I got good string to tie to. I strip that back about a quarter of an inch. You see that? You just take it with your fingers and strip it back. Okay, I'm gonna lay that across, shanking my hook to where the tip of that tinsel is at the base of my head. I'm going to lay me some light wraps around it, just like I did with my feathers, because I do not want it moving. Now, once I get it where I want it, I'm gonna Go all the way. I'm going to uh, run, a, run a wrap all the way to the base of my head and then go back. All right. Run it back to the tip of my hook. Then I'm going to tie it off. All, you don't have to do that, but I like to be sure that my jig is not going to come apart. If I sell jigs to somebody, I got to warrant them. You know, I don't want, I got to stand by my product and I do not want. Somebody said, hey, man, this ain't come apart, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, I just tie me a knot in it. So I'm just going to go back to my front and use my little holder here. Let my thread dangle. All right. Now, my vise is designed to roll. Like, you know, if you've been following me, you know it rolls. You know, so here we go. We want, ideal here, we want our bottom material, we want our tinsel to be nice and even. From where we start at the point of our, at the tip of our hook, all the way to the base of our head, we want it to be nice and even. You may have to double it up sometimes. You may have to single wrap, whatever you gotta do. We want it to be nice and even. All right, look at that. Nice and even, bam. Sometimes I'll take my fingers and just kind of twist it around, make sure it's, you know, tight and good to go. All right, now we're gonna take our thread. Let me get this out of the way. Take our thread. I've, I've still got tension on my tinsel, all right? We are going to make two wraps in front of it, 
still keeping tension, we're gonna go behind it. Make two wraps, all right? Then we're gonna go in front of it, two wraps. Then we're gonna go behind it. I do that twice just to be safe, guys, all right? Now, now that I got that done, I'm gonna take my nifty little scissors. Uh, my scissors are curved, guys, you see that? My scissors are curved so I can reach up from the bottom side and fall it all the way, bam, I can cut that excess, excess off. All right, now, we are going to use our whip finisher. All right, we're gonna catch it with our little lip right here. We're gonna wrap it around here. All right, we catch it right there, wrap it around. We It makes a little V. You can see that V right in here. See that V? All right, one, we're just gonna wrap it around. One, two, three, four, all right? We push the bottom toward the head, it comes off. Then we use our thread, pull it, bam. It's, then it slides off the top. I always do that twice, y'all. That way I know it's tied in and I don't have any issues. All right, plus it you know, gives you a little thread up at the top. You know, you can do it more. Sometimes I'll do it more. I had customers, you know, ask me, they wanna be able to see that thread, you know, right here between the body and the head. They wanna be able to see more of that. They want it to be more pronounced. But anyway, I got my wet finish tied in. We're going to cut the rest of our thread. Bam, guys, this is a finished product. Show y'all what this sucker looks like. Huh? Look at there, guys. That sucker is ready to go fishing. See what I'm talking about? The body is nice and even from start to finish. There ain't no clumps. It ain't all built up. It is nice and even. Uh, we got about an inch or so hanging, inch of feathers or so hanging past, you know, <clears throat> our hook. I would say that sucker is ready to go fishing, y'all. What you think? You got your, uh, you can see that red flash in it. You see that red flash? Oh, yeah, guys. Guys, I appreciate y'all watching. Hey, look, if there's anything that y'all would like to see me do, you know, if, if there's something that I can help you out with, whether it be the whip finish, whether it be the painting process, whatever it may, may be, guys, y'all just let me know. You can find us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Etsy, and YouTube, guys. I am here to help. If you want a guided crappie trip on East Texas Lakes, please give me a shout. Look, I will put you on some big crappie, y'all. You will have a fantastic day. I provide the snacks. I provide the drinks. And we got a 26-foot pontoon boat. You will have a heck of a time, I promise you. We do not our rates are, are fair. They're, you know, they're reasonable with everybody else's rates. You will have a comfortable trip. If you want to listen to the radio and catch fish and sit in some awesome, comfortable chairs, let me know, guys. Uh, you can call me at 903-387-2532, or you can get me on my email at texascajunoutdoors at gmail.com. I appreciate it, guys. If y'all have not liked and subscribed yet, please do that now. That helps me out a lot. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless each and every one of y'all. See y'all next time. Thank you.